Hey everybody, uh, Stacy Wells here, Stacy Wells Artistry. I didn't know if that thing was turning itself on. Actually, you know, I'm clicking the clickers, you know, and I didn't know if it was working or not. Um, anyway, this is the second in my uh, tutorial series on stained glass. And on the first one, we talked about pattern making. And on this one, we're gonna talk a little bit about cutting, okay? And um, so at the end of the last time, we had our template right here which is what we're gonna put our pieces on after they're cut up. And in the last one, we traced over this with carbon paper and made another copy of it. I have cut that copy into pieces. I just cut along these lines, cut all the pieces out. Now, one thing I need to mention on the last one, um, I think I forgot to tell y'all, well, I didn't really forget, I didn't know what colors I was gonna use on this yet. And so I didn't list my colors on here. But on this page, if you'll note, there are numbers, there are arrows, and there are color color designations. Now, at the end of last time, there weren't any color designations because I didn't know what color I was going to use. But when you're making your template, one thing you want to do when you're tracing over to make the template, and the things you want to list on here are the number the arrow that you want the glass to go in, and I went over that in another video. Um, it has some some glasses directional. It has texture that goes one way or another, and you want that to be uniform in your piece. That's what the arrows are for. I'll go over it in more detail in the other video. But you need numbers on here, you need arrows on here, and you want to list your colors on here. So when your pieces are cut up, like I have cut mine up, they will show you See, it says swirl. I know it's backwards for y'all, but it says swirl. I don't know how to do it where you can see it. In the red, that says swirl, and that is an indication of which glass to use. And then there's the number, and then there's the arrow designation that shows me what direction. Because that swirl glass is this right here. And you see those lines on it, okay? Those we want to go in the same direction throughout the piece. You don't want those lines in one piece going this way and the next piece going that way and the next piece going off that way. That looks bad. You don't want that. And the only way um, to keep from that happening is to label on your pieces those directional arrows and the color and the number. That's what you want on your pieces. Three things, okay? So I have cut them up. And I have organized them according to color. You don't have to do that. That's just the way I do it because I like to, let me turn y'all down here. Um, I like to cut, um, I like to just cut all of one color glass at a time so I don't have to keep switching glass. I want to cut all of whatever particular color at a time. And, um, let me get this better. Okay, so you see the template here, okay? And here's all the pieces. These are, I've labeled gold. Those are labeled gold. These are clear. Whoops. Those little things here are purple. And these little inside parts here are gonna be swirl also. And these outside parts, which go along with these, or swirl glass. So that's how you know what you're gonna be doing, okay? Now for cutting, you need your cutter. And I went over these last time. This is a uh, pistol grip cutter. It's my favorite kind. You have to put the oil in here. They sell oil and it goes in here. And when you use this, um, every time you use it, you wanna like clean this a little bit. There's a little wheel right there and you just kind of rub on both sides and see there's, there'll be gunk on there. And then kind of press it down and run it a little bit like that and that gets the oil flowing. Now you need your um, breaking pliers. That's these big ones. They go with this little knob up, okay, like that. That's how you adjust how these grip. So if they're not grasping um, the glass, then you need to mess with that knob. Otherwise, don't mess with that knob, okay, because it'll screw them up. Um, and then I think I called these the wrong thing. Uh, actually, I think some people call them running pliers. They're grossing pliers. And they have 
a straight edge right here and a curved edge at the bottom. The curved edge always goes on the bottom, so you hold them like that, okay? These are for after you cut the piece for nipping off little edges that you don't want, okay? So, we got all our pieces cut out and we have our, we also need our Sharpie at this point. Um, these are just regular Sharpies. Um, they're the best ones that I've found to do this. I actually prefer the fine tip ones, but like I said last time, they run out real quick. They dry up, and uh, that's bad because they're expensive. So I just use these, knowing that the line is going to be kind of fat, and I'm going to cut on the inside of it to the best of my ability. That's very hard to do. I mean, it's cutting, it has its challenges, and one of them is, you know, cutting on the lines like that. Um, I'm going to do a couple of these bigger pieces at first to so you can maybe have a better idea now another thing we need to talk about is that the glass a lot of it has different sides that's almost broken already there um one side is smoother than the other one most of the time on this one you can't probably tell but there's little um it's rougher on this side than on this side you want to always cut on the smooth side even if the other side is the side you want facing up. For instance, this glass right here, okay? Um, it has a pattern and the pattern is a texturing and it's only on one side, okay? So if you see this, you see this, these, these ridges, they appear on one side and not on this side, it's smooth on this side. So that's the side you wanna cut on, but I want this side to be on top on my piece. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, how you do that is, when you're cutting that piece, you take your piece that's cut out, and the, the side that has the writing on, you're gonna turn upside down, for instance, like that. And then you're gonna cut. That way, when you're done, the piece will fit in this side up, okay? Um, if you don't do that, it won't make a whole lot of difference. I like to do it that way just as, because I'm kind of OCD like that. Um, as far as somebody looking at it, unless they look real close, they're not going to be able to tell. But just for sake of being accurate, I just prefer to do it that way. Um, that's a matter of preference. Now, this piece here, I kind of like the shiny side better than the rough side. So I'm gonna leave mine, I'm gonna cut with mine up, okay? Cause that means that the, if you have the side that you wrote on facing up, then the side that you're cutting on is gonna be facing up in your pattern. If you turn this upside down and the side that you wrote on on here is facing down, then that means the underside of the glass is gonna be on the top side in your piece. Okay, I know that's kind of confusing. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you, message me and I'll try to explain it a different way. But that's how you do that. Now, I'm going to use mine top side up on this because this shiny side right here, this side, is the side I want to be on top in my piece. So I'm going to draw around my piece with my pen and I'm going to use it with the writing side up. Okay, and the way you do this is you just line it up on your piece of glass exactly to the edge or, you know, if it's not an edge piece, then, you know, however you want to do it, just like in kindergarten, you know, and then you trace around your piece, okay? So we got it traced around. I like to number it right then. That way I just have an idea of what I'm doing. And on this, the directional lines don't matter because this piece does not have texturing that goes in a line so I don't have to worry about that okay but I do have my number and I have um I have it cut out on the right side so I'm going to put this piece over here to the side so I know that I've already drawn that one okay now let's see if we have enough room to do this well we almost do but we don't so we'll do that next we're just going to cut out this one piece right now sometimes I will draw others if I've got a piece of glass that I am uh, don't have quite enough and I'm really trying to save glass, I'll go ahead and draw my pieces out on it 
all of them first because then I can move them around if I need to. Okay, now to cut this, um, I'm going to look at, you know, the lines and see which way I can cut that will save the most glass. Now, obviously, I don't want to cut this line first because that would cut this glass in half and that's wasteful. If I go this way, then I'm only going to waste this little piece right here, okay? So, you get your cutter and you put it on the edge right here, press down, and you're going to want to hear this certain sound that I make. It's a uh, kind of sound. It's the glass cracking. What we're doing is making a score line, and that's just, um, it's just an indentation in the glass that weakens it so that with our pliers, it will break in the direction we want it to, hopefully. Okay, now I'm going to try to cut on this side of the line, on the inside of the line. And by that I mean on the side that's closest to the body of your piece, like in here, this side, not over here. Got, got it? So when I cut this line, I'm going to try to cut on this side of that line right there. Let me show you up close. Let me see if you can see. Okay, I'm going to try to cut on this side of the line. There's the line. I'm going to try to cut on this side of it, okay? Because that just makes them fit, okay? If you don't and you get off, that's fine. We have a grinder. We'll grind that excess off. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so you push down. Now listen to this sound. Okay, did you hear that? That is the sound you want to hear. You don't want to push too hard. If it's really hard to move or it just juts along, you're probably pushing too hard. But you want to push hard enough that you hear and see this line. Now, I don't know if y'all can see it. I don't think you can probably see it on there. I'm going to put it. Yeah, you can. Look. See that white line? That's the score line. That's where the glass is broken. Now, I'm going to take these pliers here. And mine are old, so I have to push the rubber part up. Okay, now these, like I told you, you hold them like this with the screw thing up. They also have a little line right here. That shows you where you want to line your score line up. In other words, I'm going to start on this edge over here. And then I'm going to put this in line right there with that score line to the best of my ability. See how the little line there on the pliers is lined up with the score line, that's how you want that. Okay, now to cut it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna apply pressure. See, just a little pressure, and it cuts, okay? See? Now, they will be like here, little humps, little ridges that form when you cut. See that little imperfection there? The grinder will take care of that. We don't worry about it. Now, we're going to cut this line right here. See? Now, to do that, I'm going to start on this side because that's easier. Um, you're going to want to put your pliers to the edge of the glass at the same place where you started cutting, not where you ended. In other words, I'm going to cut this starting here and going here. So, when I want to break it, I'm going to put my pliers on this side, not on that side. Okay? Um, really, it will probably work either way, but that's the way I learned. Okay, so let's cut this one. Listen for the sound. I'm going on the inside of that line on this side. Okay, did you hear the sound? And see the line? There it is. Okay, so we got these lined up. See my line on my pliers? I put them right here. See how they're lined up? Okay. And then we're going to apply pressure just a little bit. And it pops right off. Now, like I said, we'll still need to grind that. But that's how you do it. Now, um, let's cut one of these. Um, that's a straight cut. That's pretty easy. Let's cut one of these swirl pieces. Okay? Because this is the textured side right here. It's rough. So I'm not going to cut on that side. I'm going to turn it over on the smooth side. They will all have a smoother side. Now, since I want that texture side to be up in my piece, when I take this to cut it, I'm going to turn it upside down, like I told you. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn that upside down and I'm going to put it right here. And let me see if I can lower y'all down a little bit. Okay. Maybe that's easier to see. Okay, now I'm going to draw this out. It's it's neat because it's got this straight line over here and this straight line over here. So it fits this piece of glass pretty well. Now, we're going to get our pen, okay, and draw around the edges. Stay in the lines. Stay along the lines. Okay. Then we're going to draw our number. That's number 12. Now, with this one... I just screwed up. Whoops. <laughs> oh, Lordy, I'm sorry. Um, Cause see, I forgot, and, and this happens, you know. Don't beat yourself up if you do this. Just catch yourself before it's too late. Because what I did was, can you guess what I did wrong? I was hoping I'd be lucky and I would have just gotten it right, but. What I did wrong is I didn't look at my directional line. Okay, you see the directional line right here? I didn't look at that. And that's going this way so I need to line that up and it needs to go we need to line that up okay if I put it right here it's not right okay I need it to go like that. Okay. Now, see these lines are going across and see.